Hello Painting 2. Um, today we're going to be going over uh, the process by which to do the illusion of space in color. Okay, this is going to be used in the next three paintings that we're working on in classroom. Um, so last class we covered how to do this technique in black and white and I did a digital uh, drawing where you, I showed you the different tricks of controlling the, the amount of contrast and, um, and grayscale um, and texture to be able to create the illusion of depth of field, which is the illusion of space, right? Um, in this class, I'm gonna be going over how to do the same technique in color, but instead of doing it in a digital format, I'm gonna actually show you kind of like the physical steps of using soft pastel in order to create the uh, the landscape. Now remember, all these original are supposed to be original landscapes of Miami. So um, um, the first step in pretty much every step of a drawing is creating the gesture to plan out the steps. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plan out the composition of my drawing. Okay, so I've planned out a gesture of my composition. So the photograph that I'm looking at is this neighborhood of Miami Lakes. And there's a lot of canals in between the different neighborhoods in this particular area of town. So I've decided to do this landscape where my background is going to be the sky and this kind of like row of kind of out of focus houses that are behind this tree and kind of like the other side of this canal, right? Um, then I have the canal and uh, this house that's on the same side as me with this fence uh, and this other little tree kind of as my mid-ground area, right? So these houses on the other side of the canal and the sky are the background. This house over here uh, and this tree with the canal and stuff like that is going to be my mid-ground area. And then the field of grass and this one tree that's really large and the closest thing to me is going to be where my foreground is and that's where eventually I'm going to have my strongest colors, okay? So um, the trick to creating the illusion of space, right, in, in a landscape is by, again, controlling your color intensity, which is something that we were working on in the last nine weeks. In the last nine weeks, we were controlling color intensity to make the illusion of chiaroscuro, right? So I have, you sprayed this with fixative, so my drawing, if my drawing is correct, it's not gonna move. Notice no charcoal is coming off of my fingertips right now, right? So I have everything planned in the right spot and I'm always gonna have my drawing there to kind of help me out, right? So uh, just like in every other kind of painting, we, when we paint on, in pastel or in paint, we paint from the background and we work our way forward, right? So I'm gonna start with the sky and these little houses in the background, but everything, in, every color that's in the background, I'm going to neutralize the color and mutate it to be less strong, right? Yes, my sky is going to be kind of a muted blue and stuff like that, but I'm gonna have stronger blues like reflected in the water of the canal, you know, and and in the colors that are in the foreground. Yes, I'm gonna have green in the green grass that's over here by these back houses, but the stronger greens are gonna be right over here. So I'm gonna go through the process step-by-step step of separating out the different areas, and I'm gonna document my palette over here on the right-hand side of the screen so that you can see it. So just to think of the first color that I'm gonna to try to recreate, everybody knows that the sky is blue, right? And you know, I mean, it is kind of boring, but you know, we can play with that. But like, remember that the blue that comes out of the pastel is actually a true blue, which is quite dark. And so we have to add white to it. now. When I add white to the blue and I create a light blue, right? That's still a very strong color. It's just a little lighter, right? It's a little lighter in, in shade, right? You know, so it, it, just because I made it lighter doesn't mean that I took away its strength, right? 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of blue's complement to the sky. There is a little bit of orange in the sky, right? And then using my white and my blue, I'm going to take that orange, I'm going to make a muted blue that has that little bit of orange in it, right? So that this color in the sky can be as light as you want it to be or as dark as you want it to be, but that it is muted so that it's not the strong blue that comes out of there. So I'm just gonna keep on playing with my mixture of my different layers until I come up with a nice muted cerulean blue, right? Keep on playing with it until it's correct. So that's the color that I want to recreate in the sky. The houses in this particular neighborhood are all kind of like taupey brown and flesh colored. So in the background, I have to kind of mute those colors and make them muted, but the house in the front is gonna be slightly stronger than the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into a time lapse and show and go through the process of, of, of documenting my palette and recreating uh, the background first. Okay, folks, so in the last time lapse, you saw uh, kind of like the way that I built up the colors in the background first. So into the sky, there is white to make it a little bit lighter than the regular blue, but there's also a little bit of orange because I wanna take away the blue. I wanna, I wanna take away the strength of the blue. The sky should not be the, that strong, right? Um, you know, in the grasses over here, there's a little bit of red. Now, once I've dulled out the grasses, I added yellow in places to show like a little bit of texture over here. I added blues to cool it down in the shadows and stuff like that. And I'm trying to stay away from using black in the background because remember, just like in the grayscale work, you're trying to save the black details for this area in the very front. Okay, so so again, the houses in the back are don't have a lot of information on them. They're very simplified. They're very they're very kind of like uh, kind of lackluster because I want to allow the amount of texture information to get stronger as I get closer to the front. So now I'm going to move to my mid ground, right? And you and and in my mid ground. I'm going to allow the colors to get a little bit brighter, a little bit stronger. I'm gonna to try to create more variation in color. And my mid, my, my mid ground is gonna pretty much persist of the canal itself going behind the tree, the house that's on the side of the canal that I'm sitting, I'm standing on, uh, the fence and the tree and a little bit of the grass in the front. That's gonna be my mid ground area. That's gonna be the area that has just a little bit more information and is drawn in a little bit sharper, okay? So I'm gonna go into the time lapse. Okay, folks, so here I've done the mid-ground section and you can see I'm using a lot more colors than I use in the background, right? And I'm trying to show a little bit more texture. I'm showing the texture of the movement of the water. I'm showing you a little bit of what it feels the leaves are starting to feel like. I'm putting more colors into the house. I'm, making, I'm using yellow to make that taupey 
kind of like beige color a little bit hotter. I'm using the still blues to kind of make the shadow areas and stuff like that. I'm showing the kind of the texture of like the fence and stuff. And again, I'm trying not to leave white or black. So every time I add like a little white highlight, I kind of wipe it away so that it becomes weaker and it, cut, and, and, it, and it goes up. Now I'm getting to the foreground. Now in the foreground, I need way more texture and I need uh, the strongest color. So even in this tree back here, even the light parts that I made lighter with yellow, I actually put a very dark sanguine behind there so that the greens in that tree will not be as strong as the acid dark light greens that I put into this tree. This tree is going to be the most brightest tree. This, is all, this tree is also going to be the only place where I have black. You're also going to notice that in the field in between this tree and the house over there, I actually started in the background with a little bit of orange, okay? And then I put the greens on top of the orange. Now, why is that? It's a nice, bright, happy day, right? And I didn't want to use straight out red in the green because that's going to make it too dull, right? But orange has a little bit of red and it also has a little bit of yellow, so it's hotter. So when I put the green on top of the orange, it dulls it, but it keeps it looking hot, like the sun is hitting the grass, okay? Um, so now I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna start adding texture. So using my stronger green and yellow, I'm gonna, I want this to go from a smooth area back here to an area that has a lot a lot of texture in the foreground. Now, one of the easiest ways of, of doing this is if you have a square pastel, roll the pastel, okay? And let the little corners of the pastel kind of break on the paper. And it creates this kind of nice, kind of like naturalistic texture. Now remember, you wanna leave you want to leave the background kind of smooth and you want it to get more and more textured as it gets closer to you. So right now I'm doing it with yellow, right? On top of the on top of where the green is transitioning from going on top of the orange to on top of the um to to going uh, to being like the pure like strong green. So I'm adding like a little bit of sunlight on here and I'm adding a little bit of yellow. I'm gonna grab a darker green that I have that is called, hold on, let me make sure that I'm saying the right name, that's not the right color. Sanguine. Okay, so I have a phthalo green or a, 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 a very bright um, kind of, uh, a, a very strong dark green over here that's called juniper green, right? So I'm gonna use that also and I'm gonna create contrast and I'm gonna be like, okay, this is a strong green and I'm using it here. And if the contrast is too much, I can always kind of tap and blend and stuff like that. But you can kind of build this up so that there is more information in the grass in the front with your stronger greens. Now you don't wanna have any of that information go into the background, but in this foreground area, you wanna have the most texture possible. So you have to kind of like figure out new ways of moving your pastel to get the most texture on there, okay? And playing back and forth with your colors until like maybe like in the very front, you have an actual, like you can actually see maybe the texture of the grass, you know, just a little bit, just building that up. Okay, and then maybe with my yellows, I come back in here and I make little actual sticks of grass. So the idea is less texture back there, more texture in this tree and in the grass as it gets closer to me. So trying to build that up over time. So here we get to the end of the exercise with the foreground. I 
I think I did a pretty poor job of documenting all the colors that I put in there because I kind of went nuts in the beginning, uh, in the front. But so that we understand what's going on here, notice that I'm using a lot of different types of mark making. I'm using yellows, I'm using blues, I'm using greens. I'm not mutating any of the colors because I want the colors up here to be strong. The darker colors are a mixture of darker greens, like that juniper green that came with my set and black, right? And I have black and white details in the texture of the bark. And there's the most information on this tree in comparison to that tree back there where the shadows are still kind of blue and everything's kind of a suggested texture, but nothing's very definite, right? Um, in the grass, I have, you know, at the bottom over here, more grass texture. And I lose that texture as it goes farther back, using the orange and the green to dull the green out, but still keep it bright and hot, like the sun is hitting the grass because it's a nice bright day. Okay, over here you actually see some kind of hatching lines to actually give you the implementation of, uh, of the grass, the symbolism of the grass, the texture when it's close to you, losing it as it goes farther back into space. And then again, the little white kind of like highlights and the black reflections are only, the pure black and the pure white are only in this one tree that is closest to me. And that is what creates the illusion of space, okay? Using the techniques from last class, texture, contrast with black and white, saving that for the front. But then as we go farther back, we lose texture, but we also lose the intensity of the colors. The colors get duller, there is red, in this green, there, there, uh, there is, um, you know, browns in the yellows, there is orange in the sky, that makes all those colors less strong. But then, just so that I can make the water look like it's getting closer to me, I'm gonna use my pure aqua, which is a strong color, and I'm gonna use my blue, and I'm gonna try to make, like, the, 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 the color closest to me in the water a stronger blue than in the sky because it's closer to me, right? I'm gonna lose that strong blue as it goes farther back into space. So I'm gonna let it kind of like blend away, right? And go into kind of like the, 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 the reflection of the sky color back there. I'm gonna have a little bit of white in the water because like when the white dances on the, on the moving water, there's kind of like the dancing motions, but I'm only gonna have the white over here and when the, the part of the canal that's closest to me, right? I'm not gonna have the white back here because that's gonna go away as it goes farther away so that there's more information in the front and less information in the back. And then if I have white in the water, I also need black in the water. So using a little bit of black, maybe showing just a little bit of kind of some dark reflections that are happening in the water, just in this area that's closest to me. You know, making it soft, making it look like it's bubbling and it's moving and that there's a current in the water, right? So that in this, so that I can have that and even the water looks like it's getting closer to me. I lose all that information as I get farther back into space and then I gain that information where you see the true black, okay? only in the thing that's closest to you. Okay, so this exercise that you're gonna be doing, you're gonna be implementing, making three different original landscapes of Miami from your photography, be it Miami Lakes or be it Doral or be it Miami Beach or wherever it is that you wanna do. And you're gonna be using this technique of neutralizing the colors in the back, right? Getting rid of a lot of the textural information in the midground, having a little bit more color going on, but still not allowing yourself to get black and keeping everything kind of out of focus, right? It doesn't, you, not until you get to that object that is closest to you, the thing that symbolizes what's in the foreground, do you have real textures with lots of mark making, lots of different type of zigzags and cross marks and hatchings and all that stuff, so that you have a lot of texture in the front, your strongest colors that are not mutated in the front, and the only place where you can have a real true kind of white details and black details are only in that object in the front. Have a good time making your three landscapes.